David Arquette winning the world championship was going to be the second blunder video in this series. Here's the old original thumbnail I put together for it back in February this year. I had a few reasons for putting it off though. Firstly, it's a topic that's been covered to death and I wondered if there was anything I could really say that's not already out there. And secondly, I hadn't seen David's documentary film that covered his championship win and his efforts to return to pro wrestling. I want to make something very clear before continuing on. This blunder, the final episode in the Blunder series is not about David Arquette the person, it's about WCW's decision to make Arquette the world champion. I watched You Cannot Kill David Arquette very recently and quite simply the guy loves pro wrestling just like you and I. You find yourself cheering for Arquette when you learn about his professional and personal struggles and you can tell his heart was and still is in the right place when it comes to pro wrestling. I highly recommend you check out the documentary even if you're not a fan of David's and even if some parts I feel were a little dramatized, but I'll talk about this after we look at everything that happened on WCW television. Because I watched this documentary, rewatched the WCW television stuff and watched and read almost every interview I can find on the sub. Subject, I can hopefully give you guys a different look into Arquette winning the world championship which by the way is still a massive blunder on WCW side that was equally as detrimental to Arquette and his career aspirations. So here it is, we end blunder on the most requested topic, it's David Arquette winning the world championship. Arquette's WCW relationship started with Ready to Rumble, a movie that received a largely negative reception but still a guilty pleasure for many wrestling fans. You know who you are. Ready to Rumble is all about Gordy and Shawn, two wrestling superfans who see their favourite wrestler Jimmy King get screwed out of the world championship by Diamond Dallas Page and evil WCW promoter Titus Sinclair. This was originally supposed to be Eric Bischoff but he got released when filming began. Gordy, played by Arquette, and Shawn then go on a mission to bring Jimmy King back to the top of WCW and it all culminates in a triple steel cage match. There's a lot of WCW guys in the movie and if you look closely you'll also see John Cena in a gym scene before he turned invisible. But yeah, to promote Ready to Rumble, Arquette would appear on WCW television and that's how this whole thing began. David grew up as a wrestling fan and he remains a wrestling fan to this day. He was very willing to appear in this movie and the WCW appearances that followed were like a dream come true. We would learn that David's love for pro wrestling and his decision to star in the movie and make WCW appearances would kinda hurt his chances for further roles as many people in Hollywood thought he lost his mind for doing all this. But we also learned that things had started going downhill for David ever since he appeared in the 1996 Scream movie. Serious movie roles became out of reach for Arquette when the aloof deputy Dewey appeared on screen apparently, but still Arquette loved wrestling so much that Ready to Rumble and the WCW partnership was a no brainer for him. Arquette's first WCW appearance on Thunder happened on April 12, 2000. This was the episode right after Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff reset the company. Arquette was shown sitting in the audience at the beginning of the show all fired up and Tony Schiavone mentioned that David was the big star of Ready to Rumble which had already been released at the time. Diamond Dallas Page and Bam Bam Bigelow wrestled in the main event and when Eric Bischoff and Jeff Jarrett got involved Arquette jumped the guardrail to help Dallas. David ends up getting destroyed by Double J and he's actually taking bumps here. DDP and Chris Canyon had shown David some very basic fundamentals before the show so he was able to protect himself and take bumps without injury. Canyon ends up up running down too but Bischoff uses a chair and the baby faces get taken out. Thunder ends with Canyon, Dallas and Arquette laid out on the canvas. Later that week Spring Stampede 2000 happened and in the main event Diamond Dallas Page faced Jeff Jarrett for the vacant WCW championship. This was a tournament final. Kimberly Page ended up turning her back on her husband to join the new blood. So Jarrett left Spring Stampede as the new world heavyweight champion and Dallas left without the belt or his wife. On WCW Nitro on the 24th of April, DDP confronted Kimberly and Bischoff in the ring but once again he was attacked by Jeff Jarrett. Arquette jumped in the ring again and he got in some interesting offense against Bischoff. When Jarrett pulled him away, Chris Canyon again ran in for the save and Bischoff wasn't happy. Eric wanted to know if Arquette wanted a fight and David agreed, saying he'll wrestle Eric Bischoff if DDP was given a title shot against Jarrett inside a steel cage later on Nitro. Bischoff agreed, so David Arquette just got booked in a match. 
Arquette was very excited during his promo and you can instantly see why some fans wouldn't like him, but if he could go in the ring this wouldn't be a problem, right? DDP and Kenyon got David all fired up backstage before the match, Bischoff comes out with Kimberly and Jarrett while Arquette comes out with Paige and a whole lot of pyro, and as soon as the bell rings Jarrett grabs Arquette from the outside and this allows Bischoff to take advantage. Eric lays in some of those karate kicks and David gets choked on the mat, David gets up and he spears Eric before pulling this face right here, that's wild, and then David rips off WWF Scotty Too Hotty by doing the worm, adding his own little twist but it's still Scotty's move, gimmick infringement brother. Arquette covers Bischoff but Jarrett pulls the referee out, DDP then accidentally wipes the referee out and Double J then hits Paige with his world title, back inside the ring Bischoff hits Arquette with a low blow, Jarrett then plans on hitting David with his guitar but Arquette moves out of the way and Bischoff takes the hit, Kenyon then takes care of Jarrett as referee Mickey J runs in to count the pinfall, Arquette beats Bischoff on Monday Nitro. This is inoffensive really, it's Eric Bischoff vs David Arquette, not Sting vs David Arquette, absolutely no issues with this and we have seen way worse stuff on WCW television. Later that night DDP defeated Jarrett for the world title, so Arquette was really instrumental in bringing the gold back to Dallas Page. The 26th of April episode of Thunder later in the week took place in Syracuse, New York and the show opened up with Bischoff, Kimberly and Jarrett pulling Arquette out of their car. Arquette gets brought to the ring where he's used as a bargaining chip, Double J wants a tag team match, he and Bischoff vs DDP and Arquette, DDP's world title must be on the line and whoever scores the pinfall wins the championship. DDP rushes down alongside Chris Canyon and Dallas doesn't accept. So the franchise and buff daddy appear and Double J says Dallas really doesn't have a choice. If he says no then buff and Douglas are gonna run down and attack Paige and Canyon. Ric Flair and Lex Luger show up to even the odds while DDP and Canyon storm the ring. Jarrett manages to get out of harm's way while still holding on to Arquette, so the offer is still on the table if DDP wants Arquette brought to safety. Bischoff, Kimberly and Jarrett give David a hard time and Dallas ends up agreeing to the match. Arquette refuses medical attention, he's adamant about wrestling this match, but Paige tells him minutes before the main event that he's not gonna wrestle tonight. Dallas will take on Double J and Eric Bischoff all on his own. We come back from a commercial break, Dallas makes his way down to the ring but Arquette shows up and it looks like David isn't gonna listen to Paige's demands. He also pulls off some gang signs and then he shits himself when Dallas's pyro goes off, fantastic. It's then revealed that Kimberly Page is gonna referee this match, so the odds are stacked against the babyfaces big time. Arquette and Bischoff fall out of the ring and they fight all the way to the back. The focus of the match then goes to the ring where Kimberly Page won't count Jarrett's shoulders to the mat and moments later Bischoff returns with no David Arquette, he's been taken out apparently. Page has to dig down to try to overcome his opponents but he gets a hand when David comes limping back to the ring, DDP gets a chance to kiss his future ex-wife so naturally he takes it, and Arquette spears Bischoff while DDP's in a lip lock. While Arquette pins Bischoff, Jarrett hits DDP with a guitar, Jarrett then pins Dallas but referee Mickey J runs down again and he decides to count Bischoff's shoulders to the mat, and that's how David Arquette won the world championship. David can't believe it, Paige can't believe it, Tony Schiavone goes into a state of shock on commentary, and the wrestling world collectively groaned as Arquette lifts the championship in the air. A triple cage main event was also booked for Slambury featuring Jared and DDP for the world title so no one knew if that match was not gonna happen, but that was really the last thing on anyone's mind. Arquette won the world championship and many still to this day see this as one of WCW's darkest moments. Eric Bischoff said Arquette winning the championship was a Vince Russo idea and Russo's backed this up, there's no question about it. Bischoff went along with it though without protest. David had no idea he was gonna win the championship and it was DDP who broke the news. Arquette thought DDP was joking, he didn't believe it, but Paige said he wasn't messing around and Arquette immediately went looking for Russo for confirmation. When Russo said David was winning the gold and David would need to hang around for another few weeks for the Slambury show, Arquette said to him he didn't think it was a good idea, but after a little convincing David admitted to feeling excited about winning the gold. Eric Bischoff said on his 83 weeks podcast that this was a stunt and nothing more, a business decision to promote a movie and that's it. 
He understands the hate it continues to get from fans, but Eric really sees it as nothing more than a promotional vehicle, while saying it's not like Arquette defeated Hulk Hogan or Ric Flair. Speaking of Ric Flair, it was reported that Flair told David he needs to show up at the hotel bar later that night with the championship and he has to buy the boys drinks. It would maybe be a way to smooth things over in a way that David could show respect for WCW and the championship he just won. Arquette said he went to the hotel that night, he was walking around talking to the wrestlers and talking about winning the championship and a lot of guys gave him the cold shoulder. He mentioned Rick and Scott Steiner not being very receptive but no other names are brought up, and he also said that it was when these wrestlers gave him the cold shoulder that he realized what the championship meant to these guys. Vince Russo, meanwhile, was delighted with how things turned out. Arquette was featured in USA Today following Thunder and that's what Russo wanted, WCW coverage in mainstream media. Russo said when he signed with the company, he was signed to a television deal, not a wrestler deal, not a booker deal, a television deal. His job was to get ratings up and get more eyeballs on WCW and he was convinced that this coverage was nothing but a good thing. But Russo actually ended up alienating those fans who remained loyal to the company, the fans who stuck with WCW throughout all the hardships, the fans who were irreplaceable. WWF diehards, meanwhile, would laugh that the competition just crowned David Arquette as their new champion. So all in all, Bischoff and Russo may have seen it as nothing more than a publicity stunt that got some headlines, but for anyone who truly cared about WCW and its history, it was just too much. You can also say it's just a belt, it's a prop and it really doesn't matter and that's fine too, but the vast, vast majority think otherwise when it comes to David Arquette. A few things before continuing on, I hear all the time that Arquette didn't want to do it and I always wondered why he just didn't flat out refuse. I mean, they can't force him to do it, right? Well, when you watch the documentary and learn more about David as a person, you can see he's maybe a little sensitive and a guy who maybe tries too much to please others. I think he may have been easily swayed into this. Next, the business with David's pay. What isn't mentioned in the documentary, yet it's confirmed by DDP and the WWE Legends of Wrestling Roundtable show, and also confirmed by Ric Flair in his book, David Arquette donated every cent he earned from WCW to the families of Owen Hart, Brand Pillman, Darren Drozdov, and Bobby Duncan Jr. I find that way more respectful to the business than walking around a hotel bar and buying people drinks. Dallas also brought up a question to fans. If you were asked to do this, if you were told you're going to be WCW champion for a few weeks, would you say no? It's something to think about. The next episode of Nitro started off with Arquette, Page and Canyon meeting the new blood in the parking lot but their meeting was rudely interrupted by Hulk Hogan's awful driving. Later on we see footage of David on the set of 3000 Miles to Graceland. His wife at the time, Courtney Cox, thinks David's lost his mind and she's telling him this new venture is very dangerous. Kurt Russell meanwhile laughs at Arquette when Courtney tells him he's the current WCW champion. Arquette chases Russell and Courtney screams that David's not a wrestler. Arquette goes to the ring and he announces that he's relinquishing the WCW championship. He's an entertainer, not a sports entertainer. He appreciates how fans have cheered for him over these past few weeks but someone more deserving should hold the championship. So he wants to vacate the belt and put it up for grabs later in the week at Slamboree. Page vs Jarrett inside the ready to rumble triple cage, whoever wins will leave with the gold. Jared and company come down to the ring and Jared says David isn't the commissioner. David decided to cross a line and become a wrestler so that's exactly how he's going to get treated. Russo and Bischoff aren't going to allow David to forfeit the championship, instead that triple cage match is going to be a triple threat and David's going to compete along with Jared and Page. Bischoff thinks Arquette could do with a warm up though so he books a match, Arquette vs Tank Abbott. Abba comes down to the ring and Paige says that match ain't gonna happen, we get a big old brawl and the babyfaces have to leave the ring and Abba says if Paige can beat him tonight then the Arquette match is off, but if Tank wins then Arquette's pretty much done for. Canyon and Arquette get locked in a room while the match takes place. Jeff Jarrett breaks a bottle over Paige's head and Dallas gets knocked out. So Tank Abbott wins and Tank Abbott faces Arquette later on Nitro. 
David's in an absolute panic backstage before the match, but he has no choice. Abbott laughs as Arquette tries to choke him out. He intimidates David in the corner before slamming him to the mat. Arquette then tries his deadly spear, but it's like a child running to their parents for a hug. And then an ambulance pulls up to the arena. DDP gets out and he comes to rescue Arquette. The cameras miss the diamond cutter, but we see it in the replay. DDP puts Arquette's arm over Abbott, and David Arquette wins another match on WCW television. Not a lot happened on Thunder that week except David falling through the gimmicked entranceway before the end of the show. Yeah, you don't hear much about this one for some reason, but it happened. The triple cage match happens then on pay per view, and you'd think this would be an easy win for Dallas Page. After all, Dallas has got backup in the form of David Arquette, so what could possibly go wrong? Swerve bro, you kinda expected it really, but it's a swerve. Arquette turns his back on Dallas and he helps Jarrett become the new heavyweight champion. Quite a lot of title changes over these past few weeks, right? Almost like the legacy of the championship had already been truly diminished before Arquette got his hands on it, but I digress. To be fair, Arquette mostly stayed out of the ring in this one, only doing the odd spot here and there while letting the professionals handle most of the heavy work. We also got to see Kenyon getting thrown off the cage at the end of the match, so there's that too, I guess. The next night on Monday Nitro, it was revealed that David was now part of the New Blood, but this would also be David's final appearance in WCW. Bischoff says this was a plan all along, and Arquette wasn't just swayed before going out for the Triple Cage match. The title win, the Tank Abbott stuff, all of it was done so Eric could screw around with Dallas Page. And Bischoff said he even fooled all those smart internet wrestling fans who were so upset about Arquette winning the gold. David delivers his promo here in that same, ever so slightly annoying manner that we witnessed during his first WCW promo, only it's been ramped up a lot. He says Paige should never have trusted someone from Hollywood. On the set of Ready to Rumble, Arquette told Dallas he wants to become a professional wrestler and Paige told David he'd get hurt. And David says here, it turns out that Dallas was the one who got hurt. Arquette rubs it in that he was the world heavyweight champion and he has Eric Bischoff to thank for it. DDP then shows up, the new blood get out of the ring after a brawl but they leave Arquette behind. David then takes a diamond cutter here and give him credit, he took the cutter well. And that's it, that's how David spent his time in world championship wrestling. The whole thing became the stuff of WCW legend in the worst way possible. Fans absolutely hated it and the hate didn't go away. Years and years after WCW's closure, it still gets brought up as one of the worst things WCW ever did and it became one of the top examples of why the company went down the toilet. I thought the same as everyone else, you kinda look at this thing and just shake your head really. Being a WCW fan and seeing it all unfold felt like another nail in the coffin and it's always been a moment in WCW history that you point at and say, well Vince Russo explained this. Then I watched You Cannot Kill David Arquette and like everyone else I learned more about David's thoughts on all this and I kinda felt bad for the guy. There's going to be some mild spoilers about the documentary in this last bit, so if you plan on watching it soon, I'd recommend stopping this video now, but I won't give too much away. What you'll learn about David in this documentary early on is that he deals with a lot of anxiety. I'm not sure if his downfall in popularity attributes to this or if it's more to do with his life choices, but David deals with his own internal struggles. Winning that championship really bothers him, 20 years after it happened. That decision made by WCW is something that hasn't left him and, in a way, it defined him in the worst way possible. His involvement in wrestling really hurt his acting career and, on top of that, his involvement in wrestling was really negatively received. So Arquette completely lost with this one. A headline in USA Today doesn't buy what this dude went through, trust me. David feels like he needs to redeem himself by learning what it actually takes to become a professional wrestler. He wants to give back to the wrestling business, he wants to respect it, and he wants to have decent matches where fans would maybe say, you know what, David Arquette really isn't all that bad. And we get to see how David trains for this while completely going against doctor's orders and family requests. It's a really personal thing that David wants to put to rest and find peace with. It's truly remarkable how the WCW Championship win affected him for so long, and because he's such a ball of anxiety, we can see how he struggles with pro wrestling even though he has an undeniable love for it. 
And seeing him try to get back into things and realizing that some folks still don't like him and some fans still laugh at him can actually be quite emotional at times. What struck me most about the documentary was how much respect he has or respect he learned to have for pro wrestling. There's one moment where luchador Mr. Maldito gives him a signed mask and he begins to cry. He talks about his love for Miss Elizabeth and how he was infatuated with her growing up. We learn about him wrestling with his family as a kid and going to shows. But all this is bundled up with superstars talking about how great David is as a person, but his championship win is something that's maybe unforgivable. David goes through a lot to try to get that redemption, culminating in a horrific match with Nick Gage that I'm sure you heard about, and finally a bout with Ken Anderson. And you're left hoping that David got rid of those things that were once bothering him when the journey's all over, but you're also unsure if he's truly, truly content. It's a fascinating documentary for sure, and I'm also confident it'll sway many fans into liking a guy who they maybe once thought was a bit of a goofball. Some may say it is a vanity project, but I still think it's very much worth your time. There's also the question about why the documentary was made, you know? Did he make the documentary because he was getting back into pro wrestling, or did he get back into pro wrestling because he needed to make a documentary? There are parts in it that come across as set up because the cameras were rolling, and I'm pretty sure that Nick Gage match too was always supposed to be super violent for the documentary, but a legit accident did end up happening. So you will have some of these thoughts in your mind while watching. It certainly helped me change the way I think about David though. I always knew about him donating his paycheck and I heard the stories about him not wanting to win the championship too, but the documentary gives us real insight into David as a person, and even after how badly pro wrestling treated him, from the guys in the business to the fans watching at home, it's incredible how much he still loves the business. So this whole thing, in my opinion, wasn't a David Arquette blunder, it was a WCW blunder. That's it guys, WCW Blunder has wrapped up and the series is over. If you're wondering if a series 2 may be coming out, I honestly don't know. I know there's more stuff out there you'd like to see covered such as Mike Awesome, the NWO breaking apart, Russo's title win, Goldberg's heel run, the Dungeon of Doom and all that stuff, but I'm taking a break from Blunder for now to focus on a few other things. If there is a season 2, I'd want to plan it out ahead of time and lay out the roadmap a little better with uploads scheduled on certain days, just so you guys know exactly when they're coming out. But again, I'm not sure if there'll be a second series right now, it is possible though. There's also the possibility of a WWF or WWE version of the series that I spoke about before, but again, there's no real plans, I just want to be honest with you guys. But thank you very much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching the 10 blunders we witnessed in World Championship Wrestling. Take care everyone.